What's up everyone, it's OJH and we are back at it again. It is Dynamo, it is Beast Week and whether you're pushing red difficulty dungeons or if you're trying to get your Murkai to all gold then in this video I have got the deck for you. So on the screen as you can see this is an average level 26 deck. We're going to be taking this into a Dynamo level 28. Average cost of 3.3 so we've got Murkai up as the leader uh, with the extended march of the Murloc so it gives you 10 seconds of the additional Murloc uh, uh, additional Murloc spawning after you've played Murkai. Then we've got the Quillbore in there with the Poison Talent for some extra damage onto any uh, squad, uh, to any minis at all, or for extra little bit of chip damage on the boss if needed, and for that unbound tanking. Chimera is in there with a double Poison Talent, just a really, really good mini, and there's quite a few uh, squad minis to go up against in this one. Our main tanking unit is going to be the Stone Who Torrent with the double charge ability. Then we've got the Witch Doctor with the Spirit War Talent, definitely the best talent for the witch doctor we've got execute in there only at level 24 this is a level 28 but this is going to come in super useful on that first boss and uh, again we can just use that for a little bit of extra chip damage on two bosses if need be and finally our main damage dealer pretty much our main kind of uh, one hit damage dealer is going to be the pyromancer set with the pyroblast talent absolutely awesome hits so hard uh, great mini to have in this one so the relics that we get then we've got the light feather so uh, flying minis evade the first attack against them then we've got the gnomish flying wheel so playing a cycle mini causes the next non-cycle mini to cost one less gold but no less than one and finally we've got uh, that flying minis gain stealth the relics that we got in this room were not brilliant as you can see two of them affect flying minis we only have one flying mini uh, but that is the hand that we were dealt so that's the deck super super strong you're going to flood the map with loads and loads of murlocs let's have a look how we did it Stomper Krieg up in first to bat then. So when we get Stomper Krieg's uh, minis to, I think it's about 50%, maybe 60%, then they start attacking each other. Pyromancer with the Pyroblast talent, um, he's going to um, one-shot these, I think, without the Pyroblast, it takes two or three. If we execute all that on the right, then we can contest the chest and hopefully get all these minis to start fighting against each other. Unfortunately, our Stone Hoof Tauren uh, was being targeted by the mage and we didn't get that chest, so it's not a brilliant start. Uh, and we do take a little bit of damage at the start of this one uh, because um, these ogre mages can be a little bit annoying and we don't necessarily want to play a load of murlocs straight into them although uh, we might not have much of a choice and that was from the AI in fairness a pretty good huntress because uh, going up against a huntress and an ogre mage uh, with a murloc deck where everything is so squishy uh, that's a whole lot of um, splash damage to try and deal with so uh, let's turn this down a fraction so that makes it a little bit difficult but paramounts are coming in clutch they're smashing it up <clears throat> excuse me and uh, taking out those sneaky bandits as well to try and get a little bit of mining done uh, with over two minutes to go that tower on the right is looking um you know is kind of there for the taking almost um, I did want to play my Murkai, but again, playing a Murkai straight into a Huntress is never going to be the plan. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna have to utilize um, something here. So the execute comes down to hopefully get those minis to fight against each other. We've kept Quillbore in hand for some distraction, which we've got there to turn the Ogre Mage around before it absolutely. Uh, it destroys our entire push. Uh, so the tactic on this one then will be to take the Siege Tower on the right, then take the Siege Tower on the left, and then we'll just go and push from there. Um, once we've got the Siege Tower on the left, we'll have loads of quick access to uh, both of the gold chests. We'll be absolutely laughing. Um, so... We could do be taking this tower on the left. Execute's going to come down just to speed that whole process up while we've got a little bit of a push going on. Torrin's still got loads of health and we've supported by a couple of Murlocs. So all of a sudden, uh, we've gone from uh, having none of the towers to having both of the towers. So that's uh, that's worked out. What I do like to do on this <clears throat> at this stage is when, um, when the additional um, mini spawn from the boss... Uh, be that Grunts, be that Ogre Mage or um, Mountaineer or whatever it might be. Um, that if you can get an Execute off on that um, on that Mini, uh, plus a bit of Chip onto the boss. And if your Execute is a bit higher level than ours, like I say, I think ours is level 24. We are in a 28, so we've got four levels different. So we're not expecting our Execute to perform brilliantly at this level. Um, 
but if your execute is a little bit closer in level, then you will be able to drop an execute onto the boss and onto those extra uh, minis that spawn, and they'll immediately start fighting each other, chipping away at the boss for you, and doing all the hard work for you. But that being said, um, we've still got Stomp Creek down to about 50%. We're going to set up a push deep so we can get as many minis coming uh, to the front as possible. Uh, Chimera is going to do a good job taking out those ground minis. Um, and because the uh, Murkite is so fast uh, that you don't need to, you know, you can afford to play them down by your own base. You don't have to play them super high. Quillball coming in to distract. Uh, Paramancer is going to do a great job of getting those minis to start fighting each other. Chimera coming down the right hand side. We know how strong Chimera is uh, with its poison spit. Uh, and just like that, uh, game over. Right, next one. Imol Far, I think, is the name, and this one can be a bit of a pain because it can be difficult not to fall behind in the economy war, and because of those exploding eye uh, things which we'll see, those purple swirlies, it can be difficult um, to... Um, uh, it can be difficult to get any mining done, and it can be difficult when you've got your... Um, your, your, or your Murkai extra Murlocs so they don't just get blasted straight away. Uh, so I tried to play a Quill Ball to distract, but as per normal, I was too slow. Um, so that didn't really do anything for us. Um, so at the start of this one, I find I do end up playing quite a bit of defence. And as you'll have seen, the AI has uh, got itself a fairly healthy... Uh, gold advantage and there's not too much that we're going to be able to do here apart from soak a little bit of damage um, again because this um, Murkai deck um, everything's so squishy in this deck I think that's the best way to describe it so um, you do have to kind of pick your moments especially when you're going up against so many splash minis um, I really, really, given I finally got a kobold to one of the mines, really, really want to keep that kobold alive for a little bit. So a, uh, a, a quillball's come down there with the uh, poison talent, which has done a fairly decent job for us. And hopefully Witch Doctor can help clear that up and a Tauren to, uh, to defend and block that charge as well. Um, so on this one... Um, you're probably already aware, but when you play a mini, it spawns one of those kind of purple swirlies. The purple swirly will explode, turn into an eye, chase you around, do whatever. So if you play a mini and that mini stands still, um, then it will just explode um, on that purple swirly. However, uh, the purple swirlies do also do damage to uh, the en uh, to the boss's minis as well. So you can use them to your advantage. Um, so we are doing okay. We've got the meeting stone and we've got the siege tower on at the right. We've got a Tauren, we've got a uh, Chimera and we've got a Pyromancer on the right. We're going to play that uh, Kobold quite deep uh, so it's got a chance to walk uh, and get away, from, get away from the explosion that's going to spawn. We could do with getting a... Uh, the aim of the game on this one is going to be a Quillboard Distraction because the uh, Immolthar's got a big um, kind of frontal uh, breath. Um, and uh, and you don't want to get caught in that, essentially. So we've got a decent looking push going on the left, and we try to cycle around, get a cool board down to turn Imothar away, and then with the Murlocs, with the Witch Doctor, and with the Pyromancer who's coming in, we should be able to get some good damage here. Tauren coming in to distract as well, and execute on that, which is going to bloodlust the Tauren, and then at this stage, with 35 seconds to go, we are in cool ball and execute range. So all we've got to do, we're not worrying about contesting the, uh, about wasting uh, gold and contesting the uh, meeting stone on the left there, uh, we will try and keep all of the siege tower on the right solely uh, so that if we do get a push going that we can uh, uh, we can uh, support it quickly but apart from that um we are like i say we're in execute range execute cool ball range we just need to uh, we just need to seal off a couple of these attacks there's the first execute coming down executed a kobold great value again we'll support this push because if we can keep this tauren alive then the tauren is going to do great work for us Another Kobold coming in, do a bit of mining. This should be, this should be, I'm not worried about losing that tower at this stage of the game with 40 odd seconds to go. Paramount to take out the Spiderlings, execute on all of that, and all in all, not too bad at all. Let's get on to King Gordok. 
Right, King Gordok then, I'm going to put a kind of a, a kind of guide of how I do that on this one, but it's kind of four main stages. Uh, stage one being to defend this initial push and then have this push uh, head straight forward to take that uh, central uh, siege tower. Uh, stage two will be to push to the right uh, to get the uh, the mage, um, uh, the ogre mage sort of thing on the right. Uh, stage three will be to push the left to get the big ogre brute. And then stage four will be everything converging on King Gordok, supported uh, by whatever you can um, support from this central uh, siege tower. So really important to get this central siege tower and have it uh, kind of confirmed straight away uh, or have it um, established. So it's regenerated. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. At the start of this one, then, if you've got a kobold in hand, send your kobold to the right, because there will be two gold on the right, and there will only be one on the left. Um, and then the point of this push, then, will be to get a kobold down to distract before um, the mage puts this kind of slow effect um, on your supporting minis. We've not got a, we've not got a massive push going on here, so we're going to have to... Uh, we could have done with the Tauren coming down um, on this right-hand side to keep things alive. So we're going to have to... Uh, we're going to have to do this in a couple of goes, but that's fine because uh, we're not going to rush and, uh, and waste uh, waste gold supported pushes that are just not going to get anywhere. So again, we need to get a uh, quill ball down to turn um, to turn that around. Torin's going to come in with the charge. And then at this point, we really need to quite quickly start heading around to the left because we want everything to converge at roughly the same... We want everything to get to King Godok at roughly the same time. Um, if the right side gets there too early, there's every chance that King Godok will have, have killed it all um, before your kind of support gets going. And that's probably what's going to happen here. So... We're going to keep our kobolds going down to keep that uh, keep the economy ticking over. We I would anticipate that we're going to lose the mage uh, the, <clears throat> the, the the female mage mini boss here. So rather than pushing to the left, I'm going to go to the right again um, to to really make sure. But I'm not going to commit loads of gold to this one. I just need to commit enough uh, to win to win her back. And we keep a bit of gold in hand, then we should be able to push round to the left and get uh, get the second mini boss um, converted to our side as well. Again, having a uh, uh, having a quill board down to distract here will be really really useful, especially with the Torin coming in and giving the good news out there with a big charge. Good for you, Torin, and execute on the right side just to get uh, that mini boss to the tipping point. Um, and from this stage now, it's going to be a flood really from that central meeting stone let's get in there from this central meeting stone now let's get a murkai down let's get some well let's just spend as much gold as we can get as many minis coming down as possible and really what i want to do at this point is take out that healing mage so we dropped a quill bore on there and um, we've we've separated we've put some space in between the healer and uh Gordok himself tauren has gone off on a charge good for you to all children's bounce tauren's bouncing around left right and center um and at this stage it is just a spam a uh, spam from the middle that's why really 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 important to keep that meeting stone execute coming down there is going to bloodlust everything the healing mage has gone down so this is just a matter of time for us now uh, there'll be no problems here king gordok that is the end of that if this deck helps you then let me know in the comments give it a thumbs up if you're not already please get yourself subscribed i'm going to link a playlist up here to all of my die more kills thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one